Okay, so in this video, I want to have a look at making a slightly more interactive numerical keypad. Now, this might be particularly useful if you're doing something like a trading card event where we're adding a number to a, like a player number. And we want to sort of visualize that, that it's a number that would go on your um, shirt. Um, so what we're going to do is use one of our existing keypad layouts. Now you can grab those from breezekeyboards.card.co and I'll put the link to that in the description. But it is this site here and that has all the XML and links to the Canva templates that you can use to start with. So I'm on a Surface Pro 9 here today, so I'm going to be using the 2880 by 1920 Canva files, which looks like this. And you can see there's a bunch of options for left and right justified keypad layouts as well as the centered one, but I think in this example, we're gonna use one of these maybe left justified uh, layouts. So what I wanna do is add a singlet or a shirt, basketball shirt to the right hand side over here. So in Canva, I have just done a search for a basketball singlet and found this one here, which I think looks uh, quite good. So I'm gonna drag this over here. Now I'm going to position it roughly in the middle and I'm going to change this color here to something orange. And we might also even just tweak this send button to orange as well, but I might make it just a slightly darker shade there. And we could just call this next. And because we're sort of going for a sporting theme, what we might also do is just change this font I'm going to change it to a one I quite like for sporting trading card type stuff called Yearbook Solid. It just sort of has that uh, right vibe to it. And we might even just thicken up these lines just a little bit, not that much. So there we go. So it's going to thicken it up. I think that's looking uh, pretty good. I don't like that grey one outline, so I'll make that uh, black like that. So now we have yeah something quite quite decent. I might just scale this up a bit. And we'll pop that, pop that there. So what we'll do is basically we will just copy all this uh, because with the keyboard layouts and breeze, we need to have four versions. It's the lowercase, uppercase, pressed, and the press versions for each. So I'm just going to, easiest way to do this, I think, is just to delete all that, paste this in. These are our pressed keys. So we're just going to inverse these. So when you press it, I'm going to make them go orange like that. This is the uppercase now. Uppercase keyboards for a numerical keypad don't matter too much because there is no shift key for symbols and things like that. But you still have to have them in there anyway. And we'll just grab this one. Is it well? Okay, so we're going to come down here and oops, we'll just undo that. Let's delete that one. Okay, so we've got our four versions here. All right, so what we're gonna try and do is basically on our keyboard layout, when we actually type in the numbers, we want them sort of roughly to appear on the shirts over here. So first of all, what we're gonna do is just export these, these screens, so do that as a JPEG, and we'll just select, select these four here. We'll download those. And then we'll place them into our folder of screen assets. I'll just quickly copy these ones. Uh, documents, photo booth images, and I'm still working in my keyboard demo file, so I'm going to replace the ones that are there. Okay. Now, if you haven't done so already, you also need to grab the XML file that corresponds to that particular keypad layout, so we can download that and we would want the MMS left because it's the left justified numeric keypad. So I'll grab that XML file because that has all the touch screen coordinates. And we just need to quickly pop that into our screen assets folder and replace the one that's already there. Now, if we're going to breeze and run this, so we'll just, just cancel out of this. So we go to file, photo booth settings, touch screen settings, and we can test keyboard and it's our MMS uh, keyboard. So let's have a look. So what we've got here is our nice sort of more sporty looking keypad layout here. Uh, but we sort of want to try if we can line up this input box on top of the, the jersey or the singlet just to make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's have a bit of a play in the XML file to see how we can do that. Okay, so oh, got a few open here. There we go. 
All right, so we've got our um, XML file. So I use a um, text file editor called, uh, called Note, Notepad++, uh, which just makes it a little bit easier to see all the code. All right, so what we have up the top here is this is where the text field is displayed in XML. Now, XML looks really scary. Basically, it's just sort of coordinates that tells, tells Breeze where each key is going to be. And they, those keys will sort of uh, correlate to your graphic design. So in this case, the prompt one is basically the text field where when you type something in, where the text is actually going to appear. And basically it's going to appear at the moment, 1641 pixels from the left, 765 pixels from the top, and it's 1025 pixels tall. Now we're also using a font size of 380, but we're gonna probably try and make that a bit bigger. So as a starting point, what we're gonna do is just bump this font size up to maybe something almost double that to 800. And then I'm just gonna save that XML file, come back into DSLR Remote Pro, test my OMS keyboard. And now we can see that this text input field has become all of a sudden much bigger. But now the issue we've got is that it is still too wide. So we're going to exit out of that. We can hit the escape key. We're going to come back into our XML. And we're going to look at our width here. And it's we need to shorten that up. So what we could do is just pop back into Canva. And just as a guide, I think we will just grab a shape. Uh, any shape will do. And we'll roughly put it where we think it should go. So something like that. And then we can go up to the three little dots here and say position. And we can sort of see the, the X and Y coordinates. And they correlate to the X and Y coordinates coordinates in the XML file here, X and Y. But what I'm interested in at the moment is just the width. So that's about 600. So we'll start with that. And we'll just make that about 600. And we'll save that and we'll see what that looks like. So we'll come back into DSLR Pro test our MMS keyboard. Okay, so that's a little bit, so if we go 23, that's a little bit better. I think we could still, I don't know what we had before, it might have been actually, it might have been smaller than that. So I think that's still way too big. So we're going to say for about, about 400. I think it was 500, so I think I made a bit of, bit of a silly mistake there. So we'll go 400. Let's just have a look. Yeah, so I think that's that's better. Now, of course, it's slightly off off center, so we're going to have to move it move it across again. So maybe we could just just try and center it. Just maybe make it just a little, a little bit wider. Maybe something like I don't know, four thirty. Yeah, that's probably. Oh, no. We'll keep we'll keep playing with that. Let's go four fifty. Save that. Yeah, okay, so that's that's pretty pretty centered within the uh, text box there. Maybe it's a little bit off. But we wanna move this whole thing over. So we've got a text box of 450 pixels wide. So let's just make this 450 wide and center it roughly where we want it. And we can see it is 19, so it's starting at 1929 pixels across. So we'll just make the X the same and then we'll come back and check that okay so that's yeah fairly centered so there we go so now we have that sort of in the middle so it lines up on the singlet now what we could do to try and make that just even a little bit more seamless is come back into our XML file and we're going to have a look at our uh, colors here background text color key background color so I think we want the that's not the one we want. Text foreground and text background. So our text background color is currently set to white, but what we want to do is actually change that to black. And these are hex codes. So we know black is six zeros. And if you don't know what your hex codes are, you can get those in Canva just by clicking on a color. And yep, if you just hover over it, it'll give you the code under underneath it. So we can see like a pure black is all zeros and orange is CB4923. Okay, and the text foreground color, which is going to be font itself, we're gonna make white, which is six Fs. 
F, 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 F. So we'll save that. All right, I'll come into DSR Mode Pro. Okay, there we go. Now, what I can see here is that actually that singlet is not black because I think I made it sort of like an off black. So let's fix that up. So we'll come back into Canva. Let's find out the exact color of this. All right, it is 231F20. So I think we can click on that and we can copy that hex code. And we'll come back in here and we'll change that background. And we'll save that. Okay, so let's just bring that up. So there we go, 23. So now we've got a nice sort of uh, visualized representation of picking your uh, your number and putting it onto uh, the, the jersey itself. So there we go. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've done that. That's pretty good to go. Now, the only thing is, of course, that this is an SMS keyboard and we probably want it as a survey keyboard so we can use it as part of our experience to put on the print layer. So we'll come back into our folder of assets here and we just need to rename all of these. So if we just rename this from MMS keyboard, it's going to be survey one keyboard underscore lowercase. This is going to be survey one keyboard underscore lowercase pressed. Uh, this one is going to be survey one as well. Keyboard is the uppercase and this is the uppercase pressed. And we also need to rename that MMS keyboard as well. Oops. Okay, so now that we've done that, if we go ahead and just run a session, I don't have a camera connected here, um, but if we just go ahead and once we hit the um, go button, it's going to bring up this nice new keyboard where we can put in the shirt number before we get started. So 23, and then you hit next and it'll start the countdown. So there you go. So that is quite an easy way to take one of those new templates that we've created and modify it for something like a trading card event, tweak the colors and make it just a little bit interactive in DSLR Remote Pro. If you have any questions, jump into the comments and let me know.